Agustin uh, Pinedo, uh, bienvenido. Um, we are uh, conducting this interview on behalf of the Chicano Studies Network and Museo Guadalupe Aslan. Uh, with regards to uh, the Chicano Studies Network in Houston, we started a project called Sembradores de Aslan Oral History Project. And our focus is going to be on the Chicano Civil Rights Movement, whether it took place in, 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 in a university, at a community center, and so forth. So, te uh, queremos dar gracias for being part of this interview. And um, today is uh, August the 18th, is that correct? Sí, es correct. Okay, and we're here in Houston, Texas. Uh, Augie, uh, in speaking to you uh, about uh, the topic, um, I think that we're going to focus on the movement that you were involved in in El Paso at, at when you were a student at UTEP, is that correct? Sí. Okay. Uh, you prefer English? And, uh, uh, English is fine. English yeah, is yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, you can mix it, it however right, you feel right. comfortable. But first I'd like to begin with, uh, who were your parents? Or well, who are your parents? Uh, my, uh, my mother was uh, Juana Guardado. Mm -hmm. And uh, my my father is uh, Agustin Pinedo, mm -hmm. but uh, at, at, at that time uh, my mother had uh, remarried, mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I had a, a gringo stepfather, if, if you can believe that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, uh, what, what in El Paso. In El Paso. Okay. Right, right. And, and uh, uh, you're a native of El Paso. Native in El, El Paso. Okay. And uh, you know, I, I tried to uh, bring him around, you know, uh, in election time, mm -hmm. and uh, stepfather. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, he he, he told me, uh, I'll never trust those uh, Mexican son of bitches. Oh, They're crooked. Yeah, yeah. So that that kind of gives you an idea yeah, yeah. of uh, you know uh, the the kind of uh, background that I that I had at home. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it, you know, uh, when I started college in, in the early 1970s. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, quickly uh, uh, started associating with, with uh, people in the movement, okay. uh, namely Mecha, okay. Movimiento Estudiantil Chicano de Aztlán. And this was where in, in uh, UTEP? At uh, UTEP. University of right. Texas El Paso. That's correct. Okay. And the, you know, this was in the midst of the Vietnam War and there are all kinds of things going on. Right, and right, everything. right. And so, you know, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of movement uh, in, in a lot of conflicts, uh, a lot of things like that. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, g getting involved with a campus or campus organization like I did mm -hmm. uh, kind of gave me some direction, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, uh, also opened my eyes to, to the larger world out there okay. and the things that uh, we uh, that were important and that we needed to to address. Mm -hmm. And one of those things, of course, was uh, was. Um, Chicano studies, mm -hmm. and also the fact that we uh, had very few uh, 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 Chicano instructors. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe we only had one or two mm -hmm. at all, and uh, so and also the lack of Chicano studies. So, if you had to pinpoint a specific year and month uh, when you got involved with Mecha. Uh, when, when when do you think that, that took place? You're well, uh, in yeah, I, I I got involved in uh, in uh, 1970 70. around uh, June. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, and this was your first year at college. This is my first year. I was going to summer school. Okay, and who initiated you into getting into Mecha? Well, uh, actually, I uh, I ran into it myself. Uh, the, the, as, as you know, the Vietnam War was going on, and and uh, they they had a, a table, and they had a sign on it. Uh, uh, counseling to to uh, to avoid getting uh, uh, drafted, drafted. Yeah, right yeah. to Vietnam that's right uh -huh. to the Vietnam War and of course you know that was kind of uppermost in my mind at that time going to just starting college yeah, and then yeah. a prospect of getting uh, drafted and all that so I went to to talk to them and I believe I I, I spoke to uh, Bert Hernandez who was man at the table I said okay well how how do you avoid getting drafted yeah. he, he tells me well just don't go. What I said, yeah, just don't go. We just refuse to go. I said, you know, kind of simplistic uh, mm -hmm. uh, answer, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, you know, I, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they told me they're going to have a meeting, and, uh, and and I start going to their meetings, the Mecha meetings, Mecha meetings, okay. right? Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, there, I, I, I met uh, other individuals that became my friends. Okay. And then uh, you know I, we uh, discussed different issues. Okay. And uh, of course, that that's how I. Uh, in the so within the uh, the UTEP environment, 
Uh, where did some of these meetings take place and who were some of the presidents that you remember or members that were part of Mencha when you first started that first semester? Well, uh, we, we used to have our meetings in the administration building. Okay. Uh, they, uh, the administration uh, allocated a, a room for us mm -hmm. and uh, up in the second floor mm -hmm. and uh, kind of close to the cafeteria. And, and it was good. It was perfect because, uh, you know, we'd have our meetings there. It was like home away from home. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd come in the middle of classes and, yeah. and talk and mm -hmm. then, you know, have our meetings. So, so it, it, it was really nice. Okay. Yeah, we, we and the food was close by? And the food was close <laughs> by, right. Yeah. So who were some of the people that were part of your uh, group, the Mecha group? Well, if, if I may refer to my notes there, sure. okay? Sure, yeah, of course. <coughs> you know, that memory starts to fade after oh, so, so many years. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, uh, there was, uh, I noted uh, Joe Medina. Mm -hmm. He was one of the, of the leaders uh, back then of, of the campus movement, Joe Medina, mm -hmm. Bert Hernandez, mm -hmm. and also David Morales, okay. and, uh, and, and his wife Carmen Morales. Mm -hmm. There were also uh, behind the lines uh, players that, that had a lot of influence, like Ruben Valdez, mm -hmm. later became an attorney. He, he's in Houston, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. and Alberto Mendoza. Okay. Uh, he became a really good friend and still is, is a friend. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there, there was Carlos Caballero, okay. who, who uh, later became an attorney. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's now living in New Mexico. He married uh, Patricia Roival, which mm -hmm. was also a member of, of Mecha. Okay. Yeah, so now they live in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. uh, there was Vivi Galicia, mm -hmm. uh, who was the sister of Homero Galicia, who's still teaching Chicano studies there at the, at the University of Texas at El Paso. Okay. Yeah, he was one of the original uh, instructors, mm -hmm. professors. And, and, and what was his name? Uh, there was uh, Homero, Galicia. Homero, Gal Homero Galicia. Homero Galicia. Okay. Right, right. Okay. And um, and uh, there was Lucy Lay, okay. uh, one of the, uh, uh, the you know constant uh, members there at, at, at the Mecha office. Mm -hmm. There was, uh, of course, uh, you know uh, when the Chicano studies came about, and uh, we we had Dr. Philip Ortega who became the, the director of Chicano studies. The first one. Yes. The okay. First director. Okay. Uh, very learned man, and uh, you know I heard him speak a couple of years ago, and uh, you know he's in his 80s or maybe 90s, but uh, you know he spoke very eloquently. And does he live in El Paso? No, he lives in uh, in New Mexico. Okay, he was yeah. one of my former professors uh, at the University oh, really? of Houston. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I think he's a Stanford graduate. I was, you know. I, I, I think so. I'm, I, you See? know, I, I couldn't really say. Okay. But I know that uh, I had him as a professor too, and as you know, he, he's, you know, wonderful uh, individual. He's mm -hmm. very, very knowledgeable. Yeah. So, of these individuals that you mentioned, uh, Mr. Pineda, who are the ones that you're still in contact with? Well, I'm still in contact with uh, Albert Mendoza. Okay. Uh, I see him every time I go. Mm -hmm. uh, Ruben Valdez now and then. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the attorney that lives here. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, was, he was very involved. Uh, uh, Louis Hakes also. Okay. I didn't mention him before, but Louis Hakes was also kind of behind the lines. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, later on, he went to work for the IRS, and now he's living in Albuquerque. Okay. Um, but uh, I, I still keep in touch with the uh, with Carlos uh, Caballero okay. and his wife Patricia mm -hmm. Caballero. Matter of fact, uh, Patricia just uh, got elected to the House of Representatives in New Mexico. Mira. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so you know, some of these individuals have continued to be active in in, in, in the movement to mm -hmm. some extent. See, see. Others have gone on and gotten a law degree, and mm -hmm. you know, they're they're, they're, they're better over there. And you mentioned Galicia también. Homero Galicia. He's here? In no, he, he's, uh, he teaches at the uh, uh, UTEP. Oh, UTEP, that's right. Chicano Studies. Okay, okay. Right, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so. Oh, and also Karina Ram uh, Ramirez was also one of the original mm -hmm. uh, the Chicano Studies instructors. And uh, kind of uh, walk us through one of the meetings that y'all used to have at Mecha. What, when, if I were sitting there at one of these meetings that you attended, what would I see happen? Well, it was very dynamic. I mean, you know, we were always uh, discussing different issues. Uh, you know, we, we discussed, of course, uh, the Vietnam War, which was very hot at that time. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, uh, what uh, we needed to do to, uh, to, to uh, in instruct uh, people not to go and that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, there were a lot of Hispanics getting killed mm -hmm. at that time and that, that was an issue. That Disproportionate was among Yes. Yeah. Very so, yeah. and uh, you know that, that that was one of the issues that you know we we would print out pamphlets and you know have a uh, uh, have a uh, tables where we would instruct the students mm -hmm. uh, you know how to avoid going or not going and stuff like. 
course, uh, you know, we, w we in meetings would come up uh, the issue of, of uh, again, Chicano studies and what we needed to do. Okay. And uh, meetings that we would have. Uh, we had a number of meetings with the administration mm -hmm. prior to finally then uh, uh, accepting to have Chicano mm -hmm. studies on campus. So the meetings uh, that Mecha had at UTEP. Uh, one of the main topics was the establishment of Chicano studies there at UTEP. Yes. Okay. And uh, who do you think surfaced as one of the major uh, promoters of the Chicano studies program in those initial years before the founding of the? Well, of the uh, you know, uh, the, the, the main uh, leaders and organizers at that time was uh, like uh, I said, Bert Hernandez. Okay. Was was one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Medina, who mm -hmm. later could became an attorney. Mm -hmm. Uh, Joe Medina, also David Morales. Okay. Uh, I remember those three as, as being, you know, uh, uh, right up front, uh, okay. uh, leading the, the charge. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there were others behind the line doing paperwork and stuff like that, like Robert Mendez, sure. people like that. So, what do you think was the main argument, or what do you remember was the main argument that administration used for not needing Mexican American studies at UTEP? Well, I, I can't recall per se, you know, the, their main argument, uh, the, the, what it was, it was, it was just uh, they, they were refusing to listen. And then mm -hmm. when we did, we had a number of uh, uh, meetings with, with administration. Tell us about one of those In fact, uh, some of them got very heated. Uh, when we had, I recall one time we, we had a meeting with, with, a, uh, with the president mm -hmm. of the university. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it, it was a, a long table. He was sitting at the front of it, and, and then we, we came in. Uh, Really angry, and um, you know we. Uh, uh, I don't think we had an appointment. We just came in, wanted to talk to him. He, he allowed us in, and we talked to him and, uh, about the, the issue of uh, Chicano studies. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, of course, you know, you know, he is saying uh, budget limitations and, and this and that and the other. I don't recall the exact, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, language that he used or the exact uh, reasons that why. We and uh, you know it, it, got, it got so heated that uh, one of the uh, leaders I, I don't recall if he was Bert Hernandez I, I think it was Bert Hernandez because mm -hmm. you know he, he was kind of more hot headed he, <laughs> he grabbed a, a, a crystal ashtray and, 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 and slammed it on the table hard oh. that scared the president and yeah, yeah. startled everybody of yeah, course yeah. and uh, and we walked out mm -hmm. at, at that point but we had a, a number of those kind of very contentious meetings. And then uh, finally, uh, we we had the uh, we we had the candlelight vigils and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we uh, candlelight vigils in favor of, of establishing uh, Chicano studies. Yes, yes. Okay. And, uh, where, where we you know we, we would uh, uh, pick it outside of the uh, administration building. Okay. And uh, so finally came the, the big day that we decided you know we're, we're not getting anywhere with this guy. You know we mm -hmm. we're going to uh, we're going to take over the administration building. And so, <coughs> uh, you know, we had a, a meeting. You said I, take over the administration, the administration building. <laughs> we were going to have a sit-in. Okay. We were going to have a sit-in, uh -huh. and uh, you know, back then, uh, sit-ins were you know became part of the uh, of the lexicon of, of the times. You know, mm -hmm. where people to protest would have sit-ins right. and stuff. Right. Right. And so we were going to have a sit-in. You know, we said, well, you know, we're not getting anywhere, so we're going to have a sit-in. We, mm -hmm. We're going to. Uh, take over the administration building, mm -hmm. and uh, so we had a meeting the night before. We met at uh, Ruben Valdez's uh, house, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, when you know, we we realized some people were going to get arrested mm -hmm. because you know, when when you uh, take over the administration building, you know, you can expect to probably get arrested. Right. And so you know, we, you know, we said we, some of us are going to get arrested. You know, who who wants to get arrested? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, uh, you know, uh, 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 I had had a conversation with my mother, the, the, you know, the previous to that, and, and she had warned me. She says, "Don't get arrested." Mm -hmm. She said, "You know, you, uh, I'm pretty much a single mom, and you know, you, you know, we're just barely making it for you to go to college, and you can't afford to get arrested." Mm -hmm. So I was one of those elected not to get arrested. Oh. <laughs> not to get arrested. Not to get arrested. Okay. You know, the, the ones that are going to get arrested were the ones that were actually going to be in the administration building. Okay. And did that happen? Yes, they did. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so the night before, we, you know, we, we had uh, people that said, well, I, I'm willing to, to, to sit in there. And mm -hmm. I'm willing to sit in there. 
So how many people do you think uh, were sitting in, if you had to guess? Well, I, I'd say around 20, maybe maybe 30. That's a good number. Yeah, there, there were a lot of people. Yeah, yeah maybe more. I, I, you know, it's a good number of people. Do you know if there's a photograph somewhere within the university uh, records of that? I, I believe there are, and, and I think there's even a, a, a short, uh, very short documentary mm -hmm. on, on what happened that day. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it was, uh, it, 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 it kind of all hell broke loose, and, you know, uh, you know uh, early in the, in the morning, uh, we, we took over the administration building. Those that were going to be inside mm -hmm. went in there and, and, and locked the doors, mm -hmm. and then, uh, of course, the, uh, the Shortly after that, the, the, the police came, but they, they came li like in, um, in formation that down the main university mm -hmm. boulevard, uh, walking like uh, uh, in a formation, military. Like, like, like a military yeah, with, yeah. with shields and batons, Whoa. and there, there were a lot of them, you know, just marching like in columns of four and four, mm -hmm. uh, rows of four, mm -hmm. and um, they came in and, and from the opposite direction. Uh, like uh, school buses, mm -hmm. five uh, school buses, but they were to take away the people that were going to arrest. Mm -hmm. And so they, they met at the middle, they right in front of the administration building. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the soldiers, I mean the police, and, and, and the buses mm -hmm. parked right in front. Mm -hmm. so they were going to arrest some people. So you're going to get limousine service. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> and, and a lot of us that didn't uh, sit in were outside. Yes. We were picketing. Mm -hmm. We were milling around the, the administration building. Okay. But you know, uh, also we drew in a lot of students that were not part of Mecha. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there was a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, participation from a lot of students that I didn't even expect. What schools, do you remember, came in? The schools? The schools that they came from? Were uh, they high schools or? No, no, this was uh, from the college. Okay. Yeah, uh, th there were also some from the schools, but uh, uh, not that many from the school. So what do you remember the most clear, uh, Mr. Pineda, as far as what you actually did on that day? Well, on that day, uh, like I said, you know, uh, all of a sudden there, there was, uh, they, they were breaking in the doors and arresting uh, students, and there were uh, other students that, that, that uh, were, were uh, uh, sabotaging the buses as the police went into the administration building. Other uh, students uh, went to the buses and pulled out their uh, uh, wires and so disabled all the buses. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and, and then uh, around that time, uh, I and, and a couple of other guys, I, I climbed up and took off the, 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 uh, the, the flag, the U.S. flag, and, and put the Mecha flag right where the American flag was, mm -hmm. right in front of the administration. How did you get up there? Well, they, they, you know, they, this guy gave me a foot lift. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, I, I got up and, and actually did And that. I wonder what happened to that flag. Oh, gosh. Uh, to, the, to the Mecha flag? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, at, 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 after the, I believe we got it back and we had it at the Mecha office. I don't know if it's still sitting there. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so what happened? Sense. What was the outcome when, uh, well, when the, they all took over? Well, the, the, the outcome, like I said, you know, the, 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 the the police came, the SWAT teams and all that, the buses, the buses were disabled. The, uh, all of a sudden the, the police had a, a number of students that they had arrested, they had handcuffed them, but uh, the, the buses were disabled. Mm -hmm. So then they had to bring records and pull those away and bring uh, other buses and, and so it was a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of activity going on, a lot of chaos. Mm -hmm. And uh, so at the end of the day they did arrest a, a number of students. Uh, uh, I think there were maybe like uh, three buses full. And uh, who were some of the people that were arrested? Did you remember? Well, some of the people that, that uh, were, I heard Hernandez, I, I believe uh, David, uh, or Joe Medina, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I were, uh, Ruben Valdez mm -hmm. was arrested, mm -hmm. and uh, a, a number of other people, I think maybe Carlos Caballero got arrested. Uh, you know, it, it's it's just so long ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you had strategy meetings to decide who was going to get arrested, who was not. Yeah, that's um, correct. You had a, uh, a an actual occupation in the administration building, where you locked the doors. Mm -hmm. uh, the SWAT came in, and also the uh, the, the the campus police. Uh, the, the campus police was, uh, was uh, only doing a supportive role. They, they weren't that, that, that visible. Okay. You know, maybe 
they call it on the radio, but no, it, it, it was largely uh, from the police department. Okay. Uh, yeah. So they came in and arrested the, the, uh, the activist. Um, let's go, may, maybe fast forward here, uh, Mr. Pinedo. Tell us about those meetings that you had when the administration finally got the point and said, uh, we're going to make it happen. <clears throat> well, it was shortly after that uh, uh, that sit-in that we had, okay. that had, because I mean it was just so big. It it, it was campus-wide. I mean it was, uh, you know, I'm I'm just surprised they didn't shoot anybody, okay. because it, 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 if you recall around that time there were a number of campus shootings in other universities. Yep, yep, yep. There was Kent State and all those, See. you know, where uh, students actually got shot. So this uh, this this uh, date when you all took over the the administri administration building. What year would you approximate that that took it, place? It was in 1970. 1970. Yeah. Okay. And um, now take us to those meetings when, when uh, the idea of starting Chicano studies actually began to flourish at the university. Did you go to one of those meetings? Well, I, I think uh, actually meetings that were where they actually started discussing uh, the Chicano studies actually probably began before I started. Mm -hmm. uh, keep in mind, I started uh, in the early part of, uh, well, around June of 1970. Okay. But I, I think that had, that had already been going on mm -hmm. uh, 